Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll podcast. This is your Sunday recap show, and we're just going to quickly go ahead and go over all the events that happened yesterday. If you look, going back to UFC uh, Vegas 63, the main event did not end up being what we wanted it to be, and boy, are we sad about it, right? So if we look at the main card, Calvin Cater versus Arnold Allen ended in the second round as a pretty much doctor stoppage, right? Um, dang, another event, another fucking event ended by an injury. We really wanted to see what Arnold Allen was going to be able to do against Calvin Cater, but unfortunately we really didn't get to see that, you know, Arnold looked good, but it was the first round. I think both of them looked good. Like nobody outclassed anyone. And then, you know, with in the last like 20 to 30 seconds of round number one, Calvin Cater jumps, lands weird on his leg. And there you have it some freaky injury, you see something pop inside of his knee. Um, and so that really sucks. Arnold Allen did get the win. Um, so I think now he's on an eight fight win streak. I wouldn't be upset if they gave him the interim title fight, title fight um, against, you can give it to him against Emmett. Emmett's on a five fight win streak. I know that lots of people would like to see Yair, but you gotta remember Yair just, you know, put in work, got, you know, beat up by Max. And so you can put him in there with Emmett. And, you know, it, it, 145 is just really tough right now as far as, like, competition. And then, you know, as being a Max Holloway fan, I'm always going to bring him up. But, you know, where does Max fit into all of this? Is he going to go up to 155? Is he going to stay at 145? You know, Arnold Allen's Arnold, – Arnold Allen against Max Holloway is a fun fight, but then at the same time, you don't want to put Max in a situation to where he's continuing to pick off number one, where he's continuing to pick off, you know, the number one person uh, or prospect that's coming up, and then Volkanovski doesn't have an opportunity to fight these people because Max keeps killing them. That's also the problem, kind of like with Robert Whitaker and Paul Acosta coming up, you know, if... Robert Whitaker knocks off Paula Costa, then what? You know, especially if Izzy is still the champ. So there's a lot of different moving pieces that are, you know, happening with all divisions, especially when you have, like, a champion and then you have, like, another fighter who's, like, 1B right up under them. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Um, but, yeah, tough way to end the fight. Then we have Max Griffin versus Tim Means. That fight was really, really good. I did not think it was a split decision at all. Neither did Tim Means. He knew that he lost all three rounds. Um, so that was, you know, pretty entertaining. Max Griffin looked really good with his wrestling. Um, and Strykin was looking really crispy as well. Dropped Tim Means in the first round. I thought it was going to be over. Um, and then you had Waldo Cortez Acosta versus uh, Jared Vendera. And, okay, so we're going to get into the results from podcast number two when Danny and I you know just looked at the fighters and basically without any information you know just guessed who we thought would win right um and we bet that whoever got it wrong or got it right you know we'd have to take shots if we got the fight wrong so we'll go over the results all right peace so here are the results of when we have to take our shots also Danny's a whole age older than when we last seen her yeah as you guys know we said tell her happy birthday so Happy birthday to her again, even if you say it in a year from now. Bless so going Lord. down the card, I told you guys, Danny's usually 60 to 70% right. On a really, really good day, she can even get to being like 80%. This time, we did about, we both actually ended up doing 66% right, right? So out of the... Should have got higher because I should have said, you know, that little boy wasn't going to make it. But I was just like, I like him. I didn't go with my real gut. But that's yeah. Right. So out of the nine of... Uh, fights that we picked because we didn't do the last two because they didn't have the pictures and you know Danny uh goes based off of the eyes we both got one wrong we both got three wrong okay so uh I went with Phil Hawes obviously Phil Hawes lost she went with Roman so she got that one so I have to take one shot on that um Cortez versus Vandera. I don't know what I was thinking when I went with v what Jared Vandera. As soon as I seen, you did too. I know, because you I was going too. with you. You led me astray. As she led soon me astray. as they walked out, when I seen Vandera walking out, I was like, this is a wrap. Like, <laughs> we're going to lose. We're going to lose. Um, yeah, so we'll both be taking shots with that. And then um, Chase Hooper. Okay, 
I said on O'Day Osborne's podcast when I was on there with uh, Mitch and Cynthia Cavillo that he looked really bad against the kickboxer um, uh, Alex, Alex Caceres. And so you, he, he had still, a good boxing game. Yeah. His striking game was weak. And I did oh, not know that, that Steve Garcia was going to come out and put it on him like that. Dropped him four times. So we lost the chase. Both of us went with chase. God, chase has to work on that. Um, so we'll be taking a shot for that. And then last but not least, Danny went with Cater. And I know that it ended terribly. But nevertheless, Cater lost. I won. So that brings it to Danny has to drink for Cater. She has to drink for Vandera. And she has to drink for Chase. I have to drink for Vandera, Hawes, and Chase. So we are... Doing. Well, are we allowed to show the... the yeah, why not? Well, I'm about to say, here's the bottle. No, it's Crown Royal. Well, you can well, show it. Well, yeah, it's not like we have sponsors or anything. Yeah. This is a Crown Royal peach. So for our first shot, let's do it. I'm using the back of um, some tea. That's one. I wish you would have done this and then talked about each time you need to do a shot instead of making us do this like back to back. Come back. on. Yeah, here's two. We actually should have taken these shots. Oh! <laughs> really, Dan? Mm -mm. I'm putting like it on. Like I said, I wish you would have talked about them. Let me drink. Talk about the next little dude. I mean, you're like, do it, do it. We should have took these shots yesterday, but we were out celebrating Danny's birthday. As the fight was going on, we were watching the Jake Paul fight, so we didn't get an opportunity to. Uh, we have one more. Mm, it's getting to me. It's getting to me. We have one more shot to take. I don't, we're not doing this again. I got to work in the morning. <laughs> we both got to work in the okay, morning. The we're not doing this again. So cheers. Oops. We didn't, there we go. Feeling it. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. What's on this? No, I'm good. I'm a G. All right, you guys. This I just I didn't quite pay attention, and for some reason I picked Jared. Had as soon as the fight started, or even before it started, and they were walking out, I was like, why did I pick Jared? Like that's just. I know that that was Waldo's debut, but like, I I don't know. Basically, I got caught slipping, right? So. That was interesting. Oh my God, Treshawn Gore. I was so excited to see him get a win. Um, he needed that win. He really needed that win. We needed to see, you know, what he looked like. At, um, we needed to see him get a win, period, in the UFC. He hadn't got one. He looked good and tough. And finally, that guillotine was disgusting. It was disgusting. It looked like his head was going to pop off. Josh woke up afterwards and was like, shit where am I like that was crazy um so happy for Treshawn especially you know on Wednesday when they did the pre-fight uh media day and he was talking about his mom and just you know really wanting to get that win done for them I was really happy uh for Treshawn Gore Khalil Roundtree versus Justin Jacoby I said that would be fight of the night um it wasn't as action-packed as I thought that it would be I did think that Dustin Jacoby did just enough to win, but I wasn't mad that they gave it to Khalil. It was a really close fight. Um, Dustin was wearing those shots. Um, he had a lot more damage than Khalil. At the end of it, Khalil didn't look like he had been in the fight at all as far as his face or body. Um, but I still felt like Dustin did just enough. However, I was going for Khalil. Um, and I really enjoy Khalil. I thought that maybe he got a little bit gassed. Like, even in the second, he kind of, like, slowed down in the second, which was weird. But then, like, the third round, he really started to pick it up. Um, but it was a really good kickboxing match. So, if you guys didn't check it out, make sure you go back and check it out. Woo! Phil Haas versus Roman. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to butcher him. Uh, that was nasty and that was exciting. Go back and check it out. That knockout came from out of nowhere. Um... 
we were going crazy about it. There were a lot of finishes on this card. I told you guys, like the cards that look like this, a lot of people stop and look at it and they're like, oh, I don't want to watch it because you don't know like the top people, you don't know like the people on like the prelims or even really on the main card. But please, please watch those fights. This is where your future stars are coming from and you want to be able to see them fight in these positions and, you know, have something rally behind them as they're going up the divisions, right? Um, so Andre Arlovsky was on a four fight win streak. We picked Lima. I mean, come on. Even Andre's last fight, it was close enough, you know, to where it probably should have went to his opponent. Um, got him out of there with that, you know, with that nasty little uh, choke. Um, good for Lima. Joseph Holmes versus Park. That was a good fight. Um, ended in round number two by submission as well. Uh, Chase Hooper. Yo. If you recall, if we go back to, actually, if you guys check out Ode Osborne's podcast, when I was on there with Cynthia Calvillo and Mitch, I talked about how um, Chase Hooper looked really bad on the feet with Alice Casares, and this was, like, terrible. This was absolutely, he got picked apart. He got dropped four times in that first round. It was absolutely brutal and nasty. Um, felt really bad for Chase Hooper. Um, hate that it had to happen to him like that, but your boy Steve Garcia did look really good. Uh, hopefully, you know, Chase is working on his stand-up. Um, yeah, yeah, that was brutal. It was nasty. Cody Durden got it done against Carlos Mata. That was a good, you know, it was just a, it was a pretty much heavy wrestling, um, but he got it done. He looked good. And then that first uh, round one submission, Josh Wims, um, I didn't really like his energy coming into the fight. Um, like when he was like doing the walk, like I saw his energy was really weird for the debut. I thought his whole energy throughout it was really, I wasn't a fan of the energy that he was displaying. Um, ends up getting submitted. He's supposed to be the submission artist, ends up getting submitted. So, you know, that is what it is. And then last but not least, I told you guys, unfortunately, that, uh, Jake Paul was going to get it done. I, Anderson the Spider Silva gets dropped in the eighth round. Uh, Anderson still looked good, though, but it just seemed like he didn't have, like, enough. Like, he was kind of, like, holding back too much. Like, he wasn't really, like, letting his hands go. Jake Paul gets it done. We're going to talk more about Jake Paul on Episode 3, so make sure that you tune in. That'll be coming out on Wednesday, um, and we'll really break down and talk more about the Anderson Silva fight. This is just a really quick recap, just going over yesterday's events and, you know, just setting us up for episode three. If you haven't already, check out podcast episode number two with Danny and also number one with Damien. Um, lots of good stuff going on. This next upcoming card, the November 5th card is looking quite slim. So far, they only have eight fights listed. So hopefully they add something. I don't know if they will. It's looking real slim, like it's looking real slim. <laughs> um, you know, Neil Magny versus D-Rod, that'll probably be like the standout fight. Oh, uh, Jelton Almeida, he's nasty. He is nasty. I seen him, I think, in San Diego, or just recently he just fought and beat somebody up. We'll be going over all of that on episode three, which will be out on Wednesday, so make sure that you check it out. And until then, have a good night. Peace out.